Hi and welcome to the next tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking night sky scene animation using Adobe Illustrator and After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we need to do to recreate this scene is we need to create a new document. We're going for 1920 by 1080 pixels. And the first thing that we need to do is I'm just going to come over here and get my color scheme. Now I've got these colors from Adobe Color. You're free to get them from wherever you like. You can get them from Color Hunt or you can get them from a picture that you like and then import it into Adobe Color. But once you have your color scheme, then what we need to do is we're going to draw a rectangle on our page and then we're going to change the color from a solid to a gradient. Now the two colors that I'm using for these gradients will be included in the description but I'm just going for a dark color because it's a night kind of scene and the gradient is going to go from top to bottom so all I need to do is make sure that I click on the gradient tool and then start dragging the slider from top to bottom and then you can have the different results that you want so if you want it more darker at the top you can move some of the sliders around on the gradient tool but once you've got your gradient the next thing that you need to do is you need to make a new layer and what we are going to do is we're just going to draw the background clouds the ambience and so I'm firstly just going to change the fill to white and I'm going to make sure that it has no stroke then I need to come over to my brush settings and these are the brush settings that I need to import I'm going to pick a scatter brush and then I'm going to change the size to random 25 and I'm going to change the next slider leave it at 100 the next uh, slider spacing, which is going to also be 20%, and then the scatter random is going to be 75%. Now, once you've done that, all you need to do is click on your brush tool and then just draw a few, a few lines, and then you'll see how you get this you know, nice look looking cloud object. Then you need to go to object expand appearance and then what we need to do is go into the pathfinder settings and click on unite. That will combine all of those little bubbles into one single solid shape. So what we need to do is we just need to drop the opacity to about 30% and then I'm just going to put that as our first layer for our clouds. Now I'm going to duplicate that by holding alt and I'm just going to change the color as I go along and then I'm going to hold alt and duplicate it again. So now I've got three different versions with the three lighter colors on my color scheme. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate it around just to give it like a different unique look. But then I'm going to create a new layer. And what I'm going to do on this new layer is now we're just going to draw that little piece of land. So I'm just using the pen tool and I'm just creating a very simple curve. And then I'm finishing up the pen tool and connecting it all back together. Make sure you pick the darker color in your color scheme. And then I'm just going to squash it a bit so it looks a bit more realistic. So once I slot that in behind the clouds, the next thing that I need to do is I just want to put some clouds in front of that. So I'm just going to copy one of my clouds layer, make a new layer and make sure that it's in front of my little landing pad over there. And then you've got that kind of effect. So now we need to move on to the stars. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly draw a very simple ellipse and then I'm going to go and change these options. I'm going to go and make sure that I select random. I'm going to start with the size at 10% and 30%. The spacing is going to be 500 and 1000 and then the scatter is going to be all the way up to 1000 and 1000. And so now if I click on my brush tool, I'm just going to delete that little ellipse. Then if I draw, you know, a few lines and I make a, a bit of a shape, you can see that the stars are slowly starting to peel. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just keep whizzing around and doing a lot of circles and things like that. So once you've got the stars there, all you need to do is make sure you click on that layer. So you can click that little circle button and then you can go to expand appearance. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller just so I can fit the stars on that section. Now you need to put the stars underneath the clouds so that they don't interfere actually with the clouds. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop the opacity to about 70% and that can be found in the properties. So now that I've got my stars, 
on my night sky scene I can then move to the next um, the next thing and so the next thing is to import our D vector now I just went to freepick.com and I just uh, typed uh, D silhouette or animal silhouette and there were many different ones that I could choose from all you need to do is just make sure that it's on a separate layer and this time the color is it's blending into the to the land over there so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change that color to black but you can change it to a darker color on your color scheme so and if it doesn't blend in with the background you can keep it but if you want to go and change it to black all you need to do is just uh, click on the fill and then drag it down so that you can actually change it to black so once you're happy with that you can press ok and now we're up to the next step so what we want to do is we want to create a light source behind the cloud so I'm just putting in a new layer there and I'm grabbing the ellipse tool and I'm drawing this weird kind of oval shape what I need to do is this time I'm gonna go for a radial gradient and I'm gonna set the opacity to 0% on one side and then the other side I'm gonna select one of my lighter colors then with the gradient tool I'm just going to bring the light source a little bit down just so it fits something like that and then I can make it bigger by holding shift and uh, expanding it and then just putting it in behind the clouds so there's a little bit of light that is now coming through those clouds and behind the animal silhouette so once you're happy with all of that then we can move to the next phase and that's to create the meteor and the moon so I'm just drawing an ellipse here and I'm changing the color to white. Just make sure that you are on a new layer. So, and make sure you're switching from the gradient and the fill. So just a plain white gradient and I'm duplicating it. And then I'm highlighting both of them. And then in my pathfinder tools, I click minus front. And that really gives that cut for that moon very, very nicely. So now one of the last things that we have to do is we have to create the meteor. So to create the meteor, all we are going to be doing is I'm just going to draw a white rectangle. Then I need to click the direct selection tool and only highlight uh, one side of the meteor. And then I need to come and grab the pen tool. And then once I put a point on that uh, rectangle then with the direct selection tool I can now move it up and create that um, you know the, the tail of that meteor so now it doesn't have to be that perfect but all you have to do is just make sure that it's rounded on one side and then it comes out a bit on the other side so now I go back into my gradient tool and this time I'm going to keep the gradient on one side at 0% opacity but the other side is going to be white. So all I need to do is just now put white on the side of the tip of the meteor and the, the side with you know 0% opacity is going to be on the other side. And so, and once you're happy with that, then you can, you know, shift it around, you can squash it down and so it's really, really thin and then you can position it on your document. So I'm going to give it an angled look and basically the, the end of that meteor, I just want to fix up a little bit. So I'm going to go back into my gradient settings and I'm just going to adjust it slightly. So I'm going to make sure that on the left hand side it's all the way up to 100% and then I'm just going to bring down that gradient so it's probably around about there. So now once I've got all of that my scene is looking pretty nice and it's nearly ready for After Effects. So what I need to do now is I just need to make sure that I label all of my layers so it just makes it easier for once I get into After Effects. So now I'm using caps here, but you don't really have to use caps. Just make sure that all your items are on different layers and you actually give them uh, meaningful names so that you know what to animate when it comes to After Effects. So here I have my cloud backgrounds and I've got a few of those. I've got the stars. Well, really the main thing that we need to animate are going to be the meteor and the stars. So you really need to make sure that they are on the separate layers. So once you've done that, you, all you need to do is save it as an Adobe Illustrator file and then you're ready for After Effects. 
So now we're in After Effects and the first thing that we need to do is we need to import our Illustrator file. So we can come over here, right click and go to import file. You can find your file and once you've got your file, then you can import it as a composition and then just press OK. So once you've imported your composition, you can just double click on that composition and the first thing that you can do is you can see all your layers there. So we don't really need that last layer so we're just going to delete that. And now if you want to change the duration of your composition settings, I've set mine to 10 seconds but honestly you can set it to whatever you like. Just make sure that everything is on different layers. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to duplicate the stars by pressing Ctrl D. Once you've duplicated the stars, I'm just going to grab it and move it over until it hits the edge of the screen. Once we've done that, we need to then create a new null object and then we are going to pick whip the both those star layers to the null object. So all you need to do is just grab that and connect it to the null. Once you're in the null, we're going to make sure that we're right at the start of our animation. I'm going to press P on my keyboard for position. I'm going to set the stopwatch uh, there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this value and I'm just going to move it over and this will give the effect that we are after. So this is going to make our stars move. Now you don't want to go too fast because honestly like the stars they're not really supposed to move that quickly. And so if you want to change anything around all you have to do is go back to the end of the animation and then just move and play around with some of these settings. So the closer to the left the slower that it will go. And so there we've got a nice you know slow kind of subtle movement to the stars. The next thing that we're going to work on is the deer and we're going to um, just maybe move its head a little bit. So we can do this a number of ways but probably the easiest way is to just use the puppet pin tool. So all you need to do is just find the puppet pin tool. You need to click on it and then click on points that you don't want to move on the actual animal. So I'm going to put some points down on his torso and things like that and then I'm going to put one point on his head. And then so you can play around with some of the movements and see what kind of animation you will create there. If you think that the torso is moving too much, then put another point down. So once you're happy with that, then we can animate this. So we're going to start right at the start of our animation. And here I'm going to put the head down. Now you don't want to go too far because it's just going to distort everything. So just subtle movements here. And then I'm going to move to the end of the animation and I'm just going to move the head back up to kind of where it was. And so now if you preview that, you can see that the head is now moving slowly as well. So it's like the head is now going up. And that's looking pretty cool. So now we're up to the final piece of animation. We're going to work on the Meteor. So make sure you find the Meteor in your layers on After Effects and it's going to be a simple position keyframe animation. So all we need to do is just press P on our keyboard for position, click on the stopwatch and then we're going to, I'm just going to move it off the screen for now and then I'm going to move forward in time to the end of the timeline and then I'm just going to move it on the other side off the screen. Now you want to kind of get the same angle that the meteor is going because otherwise it's going to look like it's kind of skidding off the sky. So you're going to have to have a small play around with that but you can see how the meteor is now flowing down. If you want it to go faster all you need to do is just drag the animation a bit more further down and then that will create a faster animation. Now another cool thing that we're going to do with the meteor is we're just going to duplicate it and offset the time slightly. So I'm just going to make the second meteor come at around about two seconds and so now you will see two meteors come on that screen and so the first one you know goes through and then the second one will also go through. So now that's looking pretty cool and if you want to leave it there you can. But that's about it for this tutorial. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you guys next time.